Hi guys, welcome back to my lab and today's video in which I will be ranking all of the palettes that I used last month, which was the month of February. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, I'm Jodi. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Hope you're going to enjoy it. And if so, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up while you're watching and hit the subscribe button if you would like to be friends. Now without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm ready for my second installment for all the palettes that I used in a specific month. So this is going to be for February. February started out really well and it up really poorly but I did use seven different eyeshadow palettes and I'm ready to rank them for you unlike January this time around I do have a palette that I did not love and so let's go ahead and start with that one if you watched my favorites video for the month of February then you're probably not going to be surprised that in last place position number seven is the Beauty Bay Love Notes palette this is a palette I did a full review on and I shared three looks with it I did enjoy the looks that I created and I also like the quality of the shadows. I think Beauty Bay shadows have really good quality especially at the price point and they have frequent sales as well so you can also get reduced prices. So this was their Valentine's Day eyeshadow palette and I bought it because I wanted the new romantic palette that was released last year. It really had FOMO with regard to that palette and so when I saw this one launched I went ahead and pressed add to cart right away because I didn't want to miss out. And looking at the color store for this one. It's a very pretty color story but it's just not one that flatters my skin tone very much. I don't super enjoy pinky tones. Purples I do love but pinky tones not so much and if you watch my review as well as my favorites video on this palette then you know that I said that there was just a lot of repetition in how the shades look on my eyes especially with these peach tones. There's like four peach tones that look almost identical on my eyes and same for these purple tones. So for that reason, I just didn't enjoy the palette as much as I think I would have. I think that for me personally and my skin tone and the way I like to do my makeup, this palette could have easily been pared down to like a 10 pan palette and I would be getting the same kind of look. And so for that reason, it just wasn't my favorite palette and not one that I would recommend. However, they did launch a new palette that was supposedly inspired by the new romantic palette. It's called the Berries palette. I have ordered it. It hasn't shipped yet and I'm kind of grumpy about it because after I bought it they put the palettes on sale and I bought that plus the purple one and the green one the large versions. So I could have saved some money had I just been a little more patient. I should probably contact them because my order hasn't even shipped yet. Anyway position number seven Beauty Bay love notes. Again the quality is fine. It's just the color story where this one kind of let me down. From here on out, I actually did enjoy all the palettes that I used last month, but someone has to be last among them. And so in position number six, I'm going to put the Flower Beauty Desert Lights eyeshadow palette. And here's what that palette looks like. It's an all shimmer palette that is basically all neutrals. I'll use this as a companion palette when I'm wearing matte shadows. Then I'll usually pop one or two of these on the lid to complete a very neutral look. And the only reason why this is in six place is because it's limiting. It's very neutral and the tones are fairly similar to one another. I would say like those two are pretty similar, the two center ones, and even that first one is a little bit similar. It's just a matter of it being more gold, more rosy, or a little bit more bronze. However, the quality of these eyeshadows are really nice. They're so metallic. They apply really well with a brush or with your fingertip, and they're just beautiful. You don't need a sticky base or anything like that for that. You don't have to wet your brush either. The quality is great, but it's also pretty pricey for the drugstore. I believe this one retails for about $17, but since it is a drugstore item, you can get discounts on them using the Ulta Beauty coupons. But the quality is great, and I really enjoyed using it as a companion palette. In position number five, we have Miss Natasha Denona, and this is one of her mini palettes. This one is the mini Xenon palette. This one launched at some point last year, but I just got around to using it in typical me fashion. And here's what the palette looks like. It's one that I added to my monthly stash because of my deck of panning project pan. Based on the card that I drew, I was supposed to pick something that was graphite gray color and I believe that this fit the bill quite nicely. Plus, I was kind of lusting after that new Kaleidos collection which has the two quads I believe and one is pretty much this color story and the other one is this but in earth tones and so 
I pulled this out and I like it. The quality is great. Definitely Natasha Denona quality. And even this shade here, which looks to be really, really light, does actually look really nice on the eye. And you can create a really pretty all matte look with this. You do have a very, very nice shimmer in the middle. And so the only reason this one is coming in in position number five is because it's very limiting in terms of what you can do. You're nine times out of 10 gonna get a smoky eye out of this. And then also, if you use it nine times, probably you'll get maybe two different looks using the palette and so for that reason it's a little bit limiting but the quality is fantastic and if you were drawn to this color story the quality is really good and I believe that this palette is still available so that was position number five position number four we have an indie brand and this is sugar drizzles butterfly palette so it's got like a long message on there but I believe it's called the butterfly palette and here is what that looks like now you might think that I'm wearing this eyeshadow palette on my eyes but I'm actually not I'm wearing a different one that's gonna come up shortly but I did create a couple of looks using this palette and I love the sugar drizzle quality and I think where they really shine is in their metallic shadows they're not all the exact same texture so for instance you see the shade quirky and unique these are a little bit more flaky a little bit more loosely packed whereas the shade butterfly on my wings emotions and flawed these are more firmly pressed however these two shades if you apply them with your finger or with a damp brush or over a sticky base oh my gosh the effect is absolutely gorgeous my favorite shade is the shade unique let's go ahead and swatch that look at that it is so beautiful but yeah like even when I rub my finger in the pan you kind of disturb it since it's very loosely packed but you can press it back in there I just love this so much <laughs> it's gorgeous but you see if you compare it to something like on my wings this one is a lot smoother but it's very metallic so you can kind of see the texture difference let me put it close to the camera so you can see you see how the green is almost like shiny mirror finish and the blue has more texture to it this green by the way is a multi-chrome it's got, kind of got a blue to green shift it's gonna be very difficult for me to show it to you but it's so gorgeous I really like their quality their mattes are okay they're definitely workable with a palette like this one you might feel okay it's not a complete palette I was able to use it as a complete palette but you have to enjoy those really bold colorful looks but you can see the colors are paired quite nicely it's very easy to get a nice beautiful uh, blue green look and even like a light purple look as well but of course you can be more creative and adventurous and mix and match with some of your other palettes but these shimmers oh they're wonderful I just ordered the palette that they restocked it was their Halloween palette from last year I think they had a restock and I went ahead and I grabbed that and it just got there it just got here today their shipping is great you just want to be conscious if they're listing a palette for sale as a pre-order which sometimes they do or if they have it in stock and on hand for shipping so the Halloween palette they actually did have it in stock and so I ordered that one by itself and a couple days later it's already here in position number three is another indie brand. I'm really enjoying exploring indie brands lately. And this is a new to me brand. This is Simply Posh Cosmetics and this is their Picking Peonies palette, which is the newest palette to their collection. So this one is like half rosy pinky reds and half greens. And it's just an absolutely gorgeous palette so the center shades are more metallic and then the top and bottom rows are going to be all mattes it's a beautiful palette this is one I did a two looks one palette complete review using this palette and swatches and everything the mattes are really really nice they're a little bit powdery but they are very easy to blend and I like how they selected the colors in really nice gradients so you can go with a really murky green really rosy colors more peachy tones there's a lot of versatility here and it's so funny to me because when I created looks using the palette both of them ended up being more grungy darker looks despite the fact that the palette itself looks so floral and happy so that just says to me that it's really versatile and you can get a lot of different looks using the palette their metallic shadows are not as impactful as the sugar drizzle I have to admit but because this one includes more mattes and the mattes are really good quality I did rank this one higher it's gonna be a little bit more user-friendly but if you're looking for really really impactful metallics not that these aren't I'll swatch a couple 
for you. So here's two of those on my fingertips. If you watch that video, I have full swatches. So I swatch the shade Sundays and the shade Thrive. And again, they have slight different textures. Some of them are a little bit more loose and others are more, more metallic in their finish, but they're just absolutely gorgeous shades as well. I find their price point to be fairly reasonable as well. Their shipping was really good and I actually picked up two more of their palettes, but I'm yet to use the other two since I was prioritizing this one since it was the newest one to their collection. Really, really pretty palette and I did enjoy using it. Position number two goes to Odin's Eye and the Hummingbird palette. This is Tina the Fancy Face. Her palette, she did in collaboration with Odin's Eye. Her and two other creators made a trio of palettes in this Legendary Diversa collection. This one happens to be the Hummingbird palette. I do have one other from that collection, which is the Giant Wolves in collaboration with Annette's Makeup Corner. This one is something that I pulled into my deck of panning as well for the prompt of an influence collaboration and this is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. Just take a look at these shades. Are they not stunning? I'm shocked at how versatile this eyeshadow palette is. So this is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today and probably the color that's catching your eye the most is this one here, the shade Fancy. It's divine. It's so beautiful. It's like a gold purple pink shift. It's what I have on the inside of my lid. Just gorgeous. And then I have the shade Hummingbird in the center and the shade Blue Fields on the outer part of my lid. And on my crease, I'm wearing a combination of Clear Blue, Lagoon, and Star Apple. I absolutely love this look. I think it looks gorgeous and it was really easy to create. I feel like Odin's Eye makes some really, really nice metallic shades. Like I said, this shade Fancy is just gorgeous. You could see it on the eye. Oh, it's just beautiful. They pick up really nicely on the brush as well as on your fingertips. The mattes are very nice and easy to use. I do have have to admit though that you can build them up so when you start applying the mattes they start very sheer but they're buildable and you can build them to the color that you see in the pan but that's not the color that you get right away so you can see on my crease I have the shade Lagoon but just lightly applied and then in the outer V I kind of have it packed on so you can see it's more rich like the color that you're seeing in the palette but because they're buildable they give you that variability and the ability to do slightly more subtle looks so even though this looks like such an incredible maybe somewhat intimidating palette no 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 she chose the colors brilliantly the other look that I did was a more neutral tone I definitely used the shade Red Hills and then some of these more neutral mattes it was such a pretty elegant look. Easily it could have been confused but for something that I created using maybe the Natasha Denona Sunset palette or the bronze palette. Just beautiful. I think she did a fantastic job on this palette and I am so glad I was able to get my hands on it. I purchased it as part of their Black Friday promotion which I believe is when most of the palettes sold out. So even though this one is sold out and you can't get it anymore, I can recommend the Odin's Eye formula. They have another color story that's really appealing to you. I know they just launched the Gila palette, which I did purchase, and you'll see it in my monthly makeup haul, which I'll have coming up really shortly. So as I was saying, I do recommend the formula. So if you see a palette with a color story that you think you will enjoy, I definitely recommend picking it up. I do find that they ship from Hong Kong, I believe. The palette that I purchased, the Gila palette was shipped directly from Hong Kong. So the indie brand is based out of Sweden, but I believe that they may have like their warehouse, their manufacturer in Hong Kong. The palette itself does say it's made in China. It's just something I wanted to mention because it's a Swedish indie brand, but their products are made in the PRC and that's actually quite common. I find beautiful palette. I do enjoy their formula and so I will keep an eye out on Odin's Eye for future collections and yeah I'm definitely glad that I have this one in my collection. Such a beautiful palette. She did such a phenomenal job. Last but not least if you did watch my February favorites and this one is going to be spoiled as well but in position number one I have the P. Louise Watch the Queen Conquer palette. So the packaging, it's obnoxiously bulky, but it's also really nicely done, really pretty and high quality. Um, the palette opens in this direction and you can see you have a pinky purple side, mostly pinks. You have a mixture of mattes and shimmers here. And on the back side, you have another portion and you can see 
yellows, greens, and some more warm neutrals here. Quality of the mattes is really nice. I mentioned in my favorites video how it reminds me a lot of the Blend Bunny formula, which I tried for the first time in January. And that was my top palette then. So it's really interesting. This one is made in the PRC as well. And I believe that this one shipped out of the UK. So you do have to pay quite a hefty shipping price to get the palette in. But they do have really great sales on the P. Louise website. If you are interested in any of their palettes, I definitely recommend that you sign up for like their email notifications and things like that because they have sales very frequently. Uh, I believe I got this one for $50. I mean, shipping was quite pricey, but it's also a really big bulky palette. So it kind of makes sense. Very high quality mattes, very beautiful shimmers. Let's swatch a shimmer too. I'll swatch the pink make it count and then the shade rival and maybe the shade boss it up so there you see those on my fingertips i love shimmer eyeshadows that's why i kind of go for those plus with mattes you kind of have to work with them to get an idea of how they're going to perform metallic shadows you can kind of tell from a swatch so these are really really beautiful soft metallic shades they apply really nicely with your finger or with a brush i do prefer to use a sticky base with these but you can get nice opacity with just a basic eyeshadow primer or even on unprimed lids really really beautiful color so pretty i still haven't used every single shade in this palette kind of opens up this way as well and it has a chessboard on the other side i just saw tara baby's haul this palette she actually did not enjoy it as much i'm trying to remember what her complaint was i think it was with the mattes i think she was saying that she was having trouble blending it out i work with a very very light eyeshadow base definitely not concealer i apply um with this one mostly i was using the nars eyeshadow base just a very thin layer and tapped it out and then i put a little bit of powder underneath my brows so that whatever matte i apply kind of diffuses upward nicely but other than that I really didn't have any issues working with the mattes I thought they were great and because the colors are arranged in a really nice gradient like you can see them really clearly it's also really user friendly so it's definitely more user friendly than the Odin's eye palette which you kind of have to have a little more experience with makeup but there's so many videos on these palettes anyway check them out because people are doing gorgeous looks with those this one is a little bit more beginner friendly again because you see those gradients same for the blend bunny palettes but based on this purchase with the brand i would consider purchasing again very very high quality and this was my number one position this month so there you have it that was my ranking of the seven palettes that i was using for the month of february if you're interested in other products that i use for the month of february i do like an organic kind of shop my stash where throughout the month i will grab items that are catching my attention either because you have recommended them or because i just bought them or because i just remember i had it and i need it for a specific purpose and then i start kind of building my makeup drawer and i focus on those specific products and then at the end of the month i'll come back and share my thoughts on everything with full swatches and close-up looks. I did one for January already so I will link that one up in the cards if you want to check it out but probably my next video after this one is going to be everything that I used in February and then I will also have my upcoming monthly makeup haul for you which this month I really went crazy. I, I think it was a little bit of emotional spending you know retail therapy kind of thing so I went way overboard. But yeah, those are the videos that are coming up. So definitely stay tuned if you would like to check those out. That's everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If so, please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. I don't have a set upload schedule, so be sure to hit the notification bell so that you are notified every single time I upload. I share those updates on Twitter and I am active on Instagram as well as TikTok. If you enjoy those platforms, I would love to see you over there as well. Thanks again for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well and I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon on my next one. Bye-bye.